Hi. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I have to say sorry for the beginning because I have a cold and I have my voice a bit broken, but I'm going to, to try not to lose completely my voice here. So, <coughs> well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for the organization of this amazing conference. Um, well, my name is Bonnie Garcia. I'm from Spain. I have a PhD in, in, in software testing, basically. I have uh, used Selenium for um, many years. In fact, my dissertation was focused on Selenium testing with, with Selenium, Selenium remote control at that time. And nowadays I work as a professor, assistant professor uh, in, in Spain. I have written a, a number of, of research papers, also a book uh, focused on JUnit 5, which I will talk later. And also I am, well, I'm an, I'm the maintainer of different projects, open source projects, and this presentation is focused on two of these projects. These projects are called Web Driver Manager first, and the second part of my talk is about Selenium Jupyter, which is about JUnit 5. These two, pro two <coughs> pro projects sorry, are, um, are made in Java, but as we will discover, it's not only for Java. It can be used uh, for other use cases. So, well, <coughs> first, Selenium, sorry, Web Driver manager, manager, this is my first uh, pro uh, project I'm presenting, is, well, it's about, it's a library helper for Selenium with driver, maybe you heard about it. Um, probably you know Selenium with driver uh, can be used to control with browsers from code, from different uh, uh, language bindings. And uh, well, the motivation of using with driver managers is because we need a binary file in between the code and the browser, which is called the, the binary driver. This binary driver uh, must be placed in between our, our test script and the browser because the communication uh, is done uh, using a native support of the browser. Okay. So, well, uh, the test speak, the W3C uh, web driver spec, but the communication between the binary artifact, the driver, and the driver is native communication. So, all in all, <coughs> We need different drivers for different uh, browsers. Maybe you, you know Chrome Driver for Chrome, uh, Gecko Driver for Firefox, uh, Opera Driver for Opera, for Opera, and so on. And we need we need these files. Okay, it's the must to to have the proper um, driver for our computer for our uh, platform. And well, in Java, this is specific for Java. We need to export uh, a Java property. Uh, J JBM property with the path to the driver. Okay? This must be done before creating the web driver object. So, well, this is bad, okay? In my opinion, this is bad because uh, our test needs to know the path, the specific pa path to uh, this driver. It causes many, many problems, okay? Like, I'm Presuming this, this problem here, we need to manually download this driver. Okay, this is platform specific. We need to, uh, well, we need to match the version of the driver with the version of our browser, because as you know, browser uh, evolve constantly, and drivers too. Okay, this is something we need to to maintain the driver version with our uh, browser version. In fact, uh, this, uh, this, this, what happened with this is that our test is not portable because uh, the driver is platform specific, so a test which is linked, for example, to a w w Windows uh, um, binary file cannot run in a Linux, a Linux or Mac machine, okay? Our tests are not portable anymore. So, all in all, at the end of the day, we have different problems, and well, we need to, to do extra effort in, in, in creating this, 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 this thing, okay. So, some years ago, 
I, I, I think, well, this is, this is bad. This is, I, I don't like this manual work. We are supposed to do uh, uh, automatic tests, and I thought, can someone else do it, this work? Okay, I, I don't want to do this manual work anymore. And I thought someone else should do, should do this work. And at that time, I looked for a solution for the problem, but there was not um, a good solution for, for, for that. And well, I, th I thought that was an opportunity to create something about this and, and create a, a tool that automates this problem. So back in 2015, I created the tool WebDriver Manager. Okay. WebDriver Manager is a Java tool, and a Java library, it's a helper, uh, which allows to automate the management of binary drivers for Selenium web driver. This is the objective of the tool, okay? So, well, uh, nowadays, web driver manager is in its version 3.4. Well, this is the latest version. In order to use it in Java and Java project, we can use, for example, uh, Maven or Gradle. Basically, you have here the, the, the lines of configuration we need. And basically, uh, by using this, this project, in your test, you will be able to uh, get automated uh, management of the drivers for different browsers. This you can hear, you can uh, you can see here. Basically, the the web, web driver manager API is only aligned. Okay, which align you are going to do all the job. You are going to to ask for for the management in an automated fashion for Chrome for Firefox, for Opera, for Edge, and also for the old browser, Internet Explorer, and, and PhantomJS, okay. It's open source, of, it's in the, in the GitHub repository, and you can use it. So, <coughs> here, just an example on how to use it in JUnit 4, okay. So, here, um, let, me see, let me see your hands, how many of you uh, use JUnit 4. Okay. And JUnit 5? Oh, okay, not bad. We will come later to JUnit 5. So far, this is the skeleton I propose to be used in JUnit 4 in conjunction with uh, WebDriver Manager. Okay. For those who, who do not know about JUnit 4, basically we have some methods which, which are, are executed before the tests, concretely that one, the before class, this method here, okay? This is executed before all the tests in the, in the class, okay? So there, uh, we call to the web driver manager to uh, download the proper uh, driver to use, in this case, Chrome, okay? This happens before all tests in this, in this, in this class. Then, well, in this example, we create the, the Chrome driver object, okay, before each single test. And, well, in our test, we do something. We exercise our system under test and verify whatever and so on. At the end, we quit, okay, we close the browser and we are, we are done. The other example is more or less the same, but for Firefox, okay. We call the web driver manager dot Firefox driver. <coughs> to automatically manage the HECO driver. So, well, <coughs> this, is, this is the way, the basic way in which web driver managing works. And now I'm going to explain the intern details of the tool, okay, because that's the, the black box approach. I'm going to explain how web driver managing uh, internally works. This is a workflow, okay, this, is, this, this is slide, you can see a workflow about the first version of WebDriver Manager. This is the version back in 2015, okay. This was a very simple approach, basically, at that time, WebDriver Manager um, works by downloading the latest version for the driver, okay. This is the single, uh, the, the simple approach. Basically, when we call to set up uh, WebDriver Manager, uh, the first uh, thing the tool do is 
to check which is the latest version available in the repository, okay? So we connect to the repository, which is different for each uh, driver, and we uh, find out which is the latest version, okay? Then with that number, okay, we, we find out a number, we check if this driver is available in our computer. We have a cache in our computer, a folder some, some, somewhere in, in our hard disk. And if it, no, it is not available, we download it, okay? The driver manager connects again to the repository and download the file and store in our, in our cache. Of course, if the driver exists, we simply use it. And finally, in any case, we export. We export the variable in order to, to, be, to be available yeah, for uh, the Selenium with driver. Okay. So, as I said, this is the first approach. It's very simplistic, I think, because, uh, well, I, I realized that this approach is not always uh, proper, okay? This latest, uh, the, the use of the latest approach is not always good, okay? So nowadays, uh, the workflow is a bit complex, okay? This is how, more or less, the driver manager works at this time. And now we have two, uh, two, new, two new concepts. Well, first, very important, a web driver manager uh, is shipped with an internal database of knowledge of the driver versions. I mean, basically this is a file which maps the driver version with the browser version. Okay? For example, Chrome 72 uh, requires Chrome driver, I think it's uh, 2.46, but whatever version, okay. This is a file, it's a properties file in Java, which maps, it knows all the relationships. So well, this is good because uh, we are not uh, relying on the late, latest version anymore. We know which, which is the proper version for each uh, browser version. And also, if the relationship required is not, is not known in, the, in that file, we are going to connect to the online uh, version of that file available on, on GitHub. Okay? This is good because the, the tool is going to uh, update automatically without requiring to, to get a new version. So well, this is the first, the first novelty in the, in the current status of WebDriver Manager. And the other thing we, need, we, we, we require is to know the browser version. Okay? We need a, a, a method to, to find out which, which, um, which is the version of the, of the, of the, of the browser we are, we are going to use. So for that, basically, we run a command in the shell in order to find out that version because, well, this is different from uh, a Chrome, for example, running in Linux, Windows, or Mac. Web Driver Manager knows a set of commands for different platforms and different browsers in order to get the version of the browser. So with the browser and the knowledge of the driver version required, just we are going to uh, continue the usual, the usual workflow, okay? And, well, there is another novelty here, which is another internal database, which is implementing as, as Java preferences. I don't know if you, you know this API, but basically it's a way uh, of storing information persistently in, in, in the machine. It's a key, val key value. Uh, database, okay? And the, the idea is that uh, the relationship between the Chrome, the, 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 the driver, sorry, and the browser is going to store persistently in that database in order to avoid to ask constantly to different online repositories. That way, the second time we, we run this algorithm, all is going to happen locally, okay? This is all happen loca locally because we have the resolution uh, stored in that database and we have the driver in the cache. Okay. Inspired in the in DNS, we have the concept of TTL, time to live. This relationship between the Chrome, well, the browser in general, and the driver is not, uh, is not fixed forever. 
has a time for speed, okay? Has a time to live at TTL. So, well, <clears throat> at the end, we export the driver and everything works. And as I said, the second time this happened instantly because everything is, 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 is in the cache. So, well, this is how Weather Manager works today. And now I'm going to explain a bit more about its API. It's a very simple API, I think. It's a supposed to have fluent API based on the, um, on these simple methods, okay? Some examples here. On the top, we see the default uh, called to WebDriver Manager. Then we use a fixed version, okay? We can, of course, we can specify the version we require. We can force different situations to force a given platform, 32 bits in this case, to force the download even if the driver exists in the cache, in the cache to avoid the user's preferences or set up proxy connection. Okay. So if you are interested, um, I'm not going to go deeper in, in, this, in this slide because basically this is more examples about configuration. There is a lot of, of ways of tuning with driver manager. You can find all of them in the documentation, in the readme of GitHub. You, you have all of them there, okay. So, <clears throat> the last talk about configuration, uh, with driver manager is highly configurable, okay. This is very important for, for testing projects, I think, in my opinion. So, I have explained the first way of making the configuration, which is with, with, Java, with Java code. But all the parameters for configuration can be done using two different approaches. First is using environment variables of the system, okay? We have uh, different labels for different uh, configuration parameter, parameters. All starts with, the, with this format. WTM in uppercase, underscore, and a label, a given label. And this is a um, environment, environment variable that weather manager is going to, to look for a given purpose, okay? This is very convenient, for example, for Travis. I don't know if you know Travis, it's a, it's a common um, CA, CI server, okay? This is very convenient for Travis, okay? And the second way is using JVM properties, okay? This maybe sounds familiar for, for this dash D in Maven or created commands. When we run uh, our tests, we can pass different arguments in, in using that, that, that notation. And uh, in the case of web driven manager, we use this format, okay? WDM dot, in this case, in lowercase, and the name of a given property. So with these three approaches, web driver manager can be configured in different situations, which is good for testers and developers. So moving on, I said that my projects are Java, okay, are cre have created in Java, have been using mainly in Java, I think, but uh, can be used beyond Java, okay, can be used as a different tools. So, um, Web Driver Manager can be used in two different ways, apart from Java, of course. First, it can be used as a command line interface tool, can be run from the shell. Well, basically what I, what I do when I release a new version of, of Java is create a, a single jar, okay, a fat jar, we, know, we call this, that is Web Driver Manager with all its dependency in a single file, in a single jar. And this jar file can be executed from the shell, as shown here, Java dash jar, Web Driver Manager, blah, blah, blah. And we can uh, make the resolution for drivers using the, uh, the command line, okay? This can be used, I don't know, for scripts, for example, in, in Jenkins configurations. Well, can be useful sometimes to, to resolve um, the drivers required, but out of a Java program. And the second um, way that can be, can be used um, with the manager outside a Java program 
is as a server, okay? Web Driver Manager works as a server. In fact, it exposes a REST-like API, which can be uh, requested by different programs and different clients. And here we have an example. We run this, this fat jar with the server parameter. A web driver manager starts to listening by default in the port uh, 4041. Well, we can request to web driver manager uh, to resolve the drivers we, we want to, okay? The, the answers to, to this request, the response, uh, is going to attach the, the driver uh, in, in the response, okay? So, well, this in, can be used for programs which are not Java. That's the idea, that create a general web driver manager, not only for Java. So, in order to conclude this first part, some conclusions, well, some numbers here. Web driver manager is a, I think it's a healthy project, uh, meaning it's, it's used, it's widely used out there. This is the statistics of this last year and last month. Uh, it, it was downloaded 200,000 times, which is not bad. And the second chart is the IP, the unique IP address. It's over 2,200, which is, no, sorry, 22,000, 22,000, which is, which is okay, I think. So, <coughs> To conclude this part, web driver manager, in my opinion, is useful. It's, it's, a, it's a useful tool. It's, it's, it's being used for different, different people. For example, the Java cli client from uh, Appium use web driver manager, Selenide, which is a high-level framework based on web driver, also use web driver manager. And also, the content of web driver manager, the same thing that web driver manager does, has been implemented in different languages, okay? There are tools, the, the, the name is, is very funny because it's almost the same. We have WebDriver Dash Manager for JavaScript, it's for Node.js. This is the Angular people who, 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 who did this tool. Uh, WebDriver Underscore Manager is for Python. WebDriverManager.net is for the language.net. And we have the web drivers gem for, for Drupal. All of them make similar stuff like with my web driver manager. And of course, the project is, is alive, is in evolution. Uh, well, there are different um, ideas in the roadmap. Uh, well, next, I am going to, to implement the support for Chromium Base Edge when, it, when, it, when it's available, I think. It's not yet available, for the best of my knowledge. And another idea I have in, in my mind is to use aspects, okay, the cross-cutting concerns, in order to detect in, at runtime when a web driver object is created, and just before that happens, execute web driver manager. This is going to be cool because the single line required to, to to manage the drivers is not going to be required anymore. It's going to be automatically detected. Well, that, I think this is doable. I have in my mind, I had, I had to implement it. I had to find the time to implement this new feature sometime in the future. So, <coughs> well, let's move on now to the second part, which is called Selenium Jupiter. Let me drink. Selenium Jupyter. This is the second tool I presented today. And well, this is a tool uh, for JUnit 5, okay? Well, maybe for, for those you you know JUnit 5, I'm not going to go deeper in this the detail because we can talk the whole hour only in this figure. I can recommend you a good book about, about JUnit 5. But in any case, JUnit 5 is a is the next uh, version of the unit. It's, uh, um, it's completely new. It, its architecture is completely new compared to, the, to JUnit 4. Basically, it has three main components. 
the core component is called platform. In, the, in that platform, we are supposed to run different type of tests, not only for JUnit. In theory, we, ca we can run, for example, I don't know, Spock, Cucumber, whatever test in the platform. And out of the box, JUnit 5 has two, what they call engines, okay? To run um, legacy tests, which are JUnit 4 tests, and brand new tests, which are called Jupyter tests, okay? This is where programmers uh, Oops, okay. They uh, build tests on the top of the brand new um, programming model called Jupyter in JUnit 5. So from now on, I'm going to focus on Jupyter, which Jupyter is the new programming model and also the new extension model provided by JUnit 5. Okay, that's the name uh, the creators of JUnit 5 given to this programming model. And well, in short. Uh, tests are created in a similar fashion than JUnit 4. We use annotation for different parts of the life cycle. Also, we have a bunch of different features to create uh, advanced tests. For example, uh, parameterized tests, parallel execution, check ordering, coding support. Well, a bunch of new features. I recommend you to, to, to read if interested. But uh, in my presentation, it's very important, the extension model, okay? The extension model allows to create extra feature to the programming model uh, Jupyter, okay? So here, as I said, I, I, I wrote a book about the unit fight from 2017. I follow closely the development of the unit fight, and I realized that this extension model was very convenient for the unit five for different reasons. And what, what I did is to create an extension, I need to run Selenium tests from JUnit 5. Okay. I create this, this, this extension, one and a half year, more or less. And this is Selenium Jupyter, okay? Selenium Jupyter is a JUnit 5 extension to use Selenium from JUnit 5 tests. And the same than before, and you can use it uh, Selenium Jupyter, basically importing the dependency, Maven or Gradle, for example. And again, the, the, pro, the project is open source, it's hosted in, in GitHub, GitHub, and you can use it whenever you want. As I'm going to explain, JUnit uh, 5, well, Selenium Jupyter in this case, allows to uh, reduce the boilerplate required to create Selenium tests. I'm going to show you some examples. And also, another important feature is that Selenium Jupyter uh, provides seamless integration with Docker, which, in my opinion, is very important. Okay. So, let's, let's see. Let's see Selenium Jupyter in action. A couple of examples here. First, uh, how to use local browser, okay? How to use uh, web driver, Selenium, Selenium web driver, using local browser. Well, it's very, it's very easy because we use the dependency injection capability provided by the extension model of JUnit 5. And that means that we simply need to declare as a parameter the object we would like to use in our test. Just that. And this, the extension, which is Selenium Jupyter, is going to do the job. It's going to instantiate the object. Previously, it's going to resolve the driver. Here, uh, Selenium Jupyter use Web Driver Manager. And that's all. We simply need to declare the object here, and the object, when the test starts, is up and running, okay? Just that. The boilerplate has been reduced to the minimum, I think. So, well, I think this is, this is very clean. This is very, this is very, very, you remember the JUnit 4 um, skeleton was more complicated here. We simply declare as a parameter the, the object. Or it can be done 
also is not in this example, but it can be done as a, as a parameter in the constructor, okay? As the constructor of the class. The two flowers are, are supported. So, well, this example is more of the same. The same contest, we use Firefox, we declare a Firefox driver object, and we use Firefox in the second test. And of course, we can use different tests, okay? Simply declaring different parameters. Somehow we ask, hey, Selenium Jupyter, give, provide me a Chrome, provide me a Firefox. And Selenium Jupyter creates this object for you. Well, all these drivers are supported, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Safari, Edge, Explorer, HTML Unim, Phantom GAs, and Appium. Okay, all of this can be requested somehow to Selenium Jupyter. So, Also, we can uh, use Selenium Jupyter to run remote browsers, okay? And Selenium Jupyter for that provides two annotations called driver URL and driver capabilities. This annotation can be used at parameter level or file level, okay? In this example, I use um, the, the driver URL for source lab and a given set of capabilities. Okay, I'm going to use, <coughs> sorry, come here, I think, yeah. Well, basically, <coughs> I have configured the capability to, to use Chrome in a given um, SOSLAV URL, okay. This is quite simple, I think. For IPUN is, is, the, is the same, more or less, but in this case, it's an IPUN server running in the local host. Okay, this is spy. And well, now we are in the Docker support, which in my opinion is the most important part of this project. Uh, the thing is, mm, Selenium Jupyter provides easy integration with Docker, which is very, very interesting. We have the annotation Docker browser, which allows to run browsers in Docker container. And here I would like to thank different, different people because I, I use the Docker images provided for different projects. First, the AeroCube, which is, which is a Russian company. In fact, next presentation is going to, to explain you interesting stuff by Ivan, which is, which is here. And these people are making a, a, a great job creating um, Docker images. In this case, I use its images for Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. They have a bunch of different versions, from old version to the to the latest ones. Then the beta and, and, and unstable versions are maintained by Elastes, which is an European project in which I work, uh, by the way. Sorry. <coughs> and then I support also H and Internet Explorer, which also are uh, well. This is these are not in the in the Docker Hub because of the license, but can be created using the tutorial provided by 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 Aerocube, as is going to be by Ivan in the next in the next session. Finally. I use the Android images provided by uh, a maintainer called Budi Utom, which is the, the maintainer of the project Docker Android. So my project uses these, these images. Okay. Thanks to all these, these images, Selenium Jupyter is able to create tests with browser in Docker container in a very simple way. Let's see an example. Here, we have a test which is going to use Chrome in a Docker container. Selenium Jupyter is going to pull the image to start the container, and after that, the, con the container will be available using this object, okay? The remote web driver 
object. And that's all. The, it's very simple. There is a lot of work here in the, in the, in the internals because Selenium and Jupyter pull the image. The image should just sit. And <coughs> inter interesting here is that we are not telling the version, OK? If we don't specify the version, we are going to use the latest version in the Docker Hub. And this is const constantly updated, OK? I call this, with this service name, Evergreen Docker Browser, because we are going to use the latest version, OK? We don't need to um, update up our infrastructure. It's somehow automatically updated, OK? This is very interesting because we always are going to use the latest version of the browser with zero effort. Okay. <coughs> so in the second in the second example, I fix a version. Okay. No, I need version 66 in this case of Firefox. Okay. In that case, we use that version, and we have also these special labels to use the latest, which is by default latest dash a number, meaning the previous one. For example, latest dash one means the previous version. Latest dash two is two versions above, and so on. And also beta and unstable is supported. So, this can be used, of course, for functional tests. But another interesting feature is that this can be used for performance tests. Okay. We can use the attribute size of the Docker browser annotation to ask for a number of Docker in sorry browser in Docker container. This is going to be provided using a list of remote web driver objects. So in this example, what we have is ten um, Chrome browser. Yeah, is Chrome in Docker containers. We have 10 browsers, which can be done for, I don't know, for parallel requests to a website or whatever. This is very convenient for when we need a bunch of web browsers available to do performance tests. Of course, the limit here is the machine. Okay? In my tests, in my personal computing, in my laptop, more or less uh, 90, cent, 90 or cent browser is okay, but more than number is not supported by the hardware. Okay, the CPU and the memory get the sources and the, the the machine well die. But for a number of uh, reasonable uh, browsers, it's okay. So <coughs> next, next is next is an example of Android in Docker and containers. It's very simple. Simply changing the type. Now it's Android. We can use a, in this case, is a Nexus S mobile in a Docker container. From the test perspective, it's always the same. We have the driver object, and we can use the regular WebDriver API to find elements, navigate to our URL, and so on and so forth. This version is supported, this Android version, and with these uh, devices. So, moving on, a different feature is that we have access to the remote session using BNC. Okay, this is very interesting because we have uh, access to the Docker container using BNC, and we can see what is happening, and also we can record we can record what, what the test does, which is very convenient for debugging. Okay, In, if you use WebDriver, sometimes happens that the test fails. But okay, why? Why is failing this test? I don't know why. Well, sometimes having the recording is is a good tool to try to find out why our test has has failed. This can be done out of the box using Docker containers with Selenium Jupyter very easily. Okay, we have the recording and after the test, we simply need to check what, what's happened, and this is this is it. Basically, very quickly, a couple of a feature more test templates. This is a very interesting one. 
This is about, well, test templates is a feature of JUnit 5, but basically run the same test with different inputs, okay? And Selene Jupyter provides two ways of doing this. With a JSON file, okay, we create how many uh, execution and which, which browsers we are going to run the same tests, okay? This, this test with this JSON file is executed four times, okay? The same logic with different browsers. Also can be used uh, this, this scenario with code, okay, programmatically. You can see here an example. And well, uh, the last part is more or less the same than with driver manager in Selenium Jupyter. We have a configuration based on environment environments, Java properties, and with code. And also, Selenium Jupyter can be used as a command line interface tool to get the BNC URL uh, remote session and also as a server. Okay? In this case, Selenium Jupyter works as a regular Selenium server. Okay? That URL can be used as a regular Selenium server, which is very convenient for programs which are not Java. So, well, some data here is not that used that uh, with the manager, but it's a younger project. I hope uh, this, this figure go, go, go up in the next, the next year. And to conclude, uh, well, Selenium Jupyter has a lot of different features. I have no time to, to explain everything, but, well, there is a bunch of different, different, different projects you can Take a look to the documentation. I made a big effort in, in documenting everything. It's in there. And of course, Selenium Jupyter is going to evolve in the future. Uh, I plan to improve the test template support on the one hand, and also improve the scalability for performance tests. My idea is to use Kubernetes for this, because now I use only Docker in the future. I plan to use Kubernetes to, to, to improve this capability thing. So think, I think it's over. That's it. Thank you very much.